Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. Lou invested $10,000, part at 5% and the rest at 6%. And what we're talking about here is simple interest, no compounding. His total annual income from these investments was $575. How much did he invest at each rate? Okay, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take one more quick look at the question. So Lou is investing $10,000, and he's going to put part in a 5% investment and the rest in a 6% investment. Now, his total annual income from uh, these investments is $575. That's how much he made on uh, the combined total of the return on his investment, if you will, the ROI. Now, the question is, how much did he put in? How much did he invest at each rate? Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, he should have just put all the money in the higher investment, 6%. Why would he, you know, split uh, between 5 and 6%? Yes, that's a good question, but people do a lot of different things when it comes to investing. Matter of fact, at the time I'm posting this video, you can actually get this type of interest rates in your savings accounts, which is pretty exciting as uh, uh, savings investment rates have been very low for many years, but I don't want to go off on too many tangents. Let's go and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is the following, $2,500 at 5% and $7,500 at 6%. Okay, so this is the correct answer. Now, if you got this right, that is super good. Matter of fact, I have to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you can solve basic algebra percent word problems because that's basically what we have here. Uh, clearly, we're going to need to know a thing or two about uh, percent, but uh, really we're going to have to use a little bit of algebra to figure out this problem. Now, it is possible that you could uh, maybe figure this out without using algebra, but why go through all this extra, you know, guessing or extra work when algebra is such a wonderful tool? It makes things so much easier. And if you didn't get this right, well, you'll be looking like this person in a few minutes because I'm going to get into the solution right now. Okay, so first things first. First, we have a lovely math word problem. Always use the rule of three when you're encountering uh, any problem. Now, I've already read the problem a few times, but let's suppose this is the first time you are you know, looking at uh, this particular problem. You just don't want to read it one time and then start doing stuff. You want to give your brain a little bit of time to kind of absorb the information and strategize and say, okay, what should I do? Now, in this particular problem, we need to focus in on the question. And the question is, how much did he invest at each rate? i.e. how much money did he put into the 5% investment and the 6% investment. So he's going to take this $10,000 and he's going to split it up. Some of this money is going to go to the 5% and some of this money is going to go to the 6%. But we do know that he made a total of $575. So we have all the information that we need to solve this problem. But what we want to do is model the unknown. What is the question? The question is, how much did he invest at each rate? Well, when you have questions like, hey, how much did he invest, or how much is this, or how much is that, uh, this is a perfect situation to use algebra because we can uh, let a variable represent the unknown value. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how I did that. And uh, you could have done something similar. So I'm going to let X equal the amount he invested, Lou invested, at 5%. Now, X could also represent the amount he invested at 6%. It really uh, doesn't make that much of a difference. 
uh, you'll get the same solution. But I'm going to let X equal the amount he invested at 5%. Now, if he invested X dollars, remember he has a total of $10,000. If he puts X dollars into the 5% investment, well, how much money is he going to put into the 6% 6 investment? Well, he's going to have to put, uh, so you're going to have to subtract away this amount he put into the 5% from 10,000. So 10,000 minus X is what he put into the 6%. All right, so we have two uh, uh, variables or variable expressions that represent the amount he invested into um, you know, these vehicles, whether they be, you know, well, they're not going to be stocks, more or less. They could be <laughs> savings accounts. Who knows? But let's go ahead and uh, take the next step here, which is to figure out how can we kind of link together all the information in the prompt to solve for X. See, uh, the main idea when you when you're using algebra to solve a word problem is once you've established some variables and variable expressions, you need to start thinking to yourself, all right, how can I solve for this variable? Well, the only way you can solve for this variable is to construct an equation. So you need to start thinking of, of you know, how this information is relating to one another in such a way where you can form an equation. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, this is just kind of a little bit of a, um, a summary of what's in the problem, okay? So we have 5% invested at one particular amount, okay? plus 6% that's invested. Uh, well, we have a particular amount that we're going to invest at 6%. We have another amount that we're going to invest at 5%. I think that's a better way of saying it. But the total, okay, if we take 5% of this amount invested at 5% plus the amount he invested at 6%, if we can figure this out, we do know that the grand total is $575, meaning that's how much he earned on these investments, okay? So if you can figure out what 5% of this amount is and 6% of this amount is, well, that's 575. Well, we just kind of established some nice, lovely variables that represent the amounts invested at 5% and 6%. So let's go ahead and actually use those. All right, so 5%, how much did he invest at 5%? What was the amount? X, right? We said X was the amount he invested at 5%. And then uh, we uh, said that 10,000 minus X was the amount he invested at 6%, okay? And that's going to equal to 575. All right, so we're almost there, okay? Hopefully you can uh, see how we can form an actual algebra equation with this setup, okay? And this is the kind of logic that you need to use. Now, you don't have to do all of this. Uh, some of you could, uh, you know... I looked at the prompt and said, oh, I know exactly what to do. And that's fine. But make sure you, you know, at least make it clear your initial setup and what it represents. Okay, so this is kind of uh, the logic here. And look right here, we have this lovely equation symbol, uh, this equal sign. So we have an equation. All right, so let's put this all together. So this is going to look like this. Okay, so 5%. Of this amount, okay, or the amount invested at 5%, uh, plus uh, 6% times the amount invested at 6%, which of course is 10,000 minus X, is going to equal to 575. All right, so how do we find a percent of a number? Well, 5% of any number, you're going to change this percent to a decimal. So the way we do that is divide by 100 or move the decimal point over two places to the left. So 5% is going to be equal to 0.05. So we're going to uh, take 0 0.05, not 5%, 0 0.05, and multiply it by X, right? So that's uh, basically 5% of this amount. So 0 0.05 uh, times X plus 6%, which is going to be 0 0.06 times the amount invested at uh, 6%, which is 10,000 minus X. So this right here, these two things uh, represent the amount that we're going to make in, uh, from these uh, respective investments. But we do know that the grand total is going to be $575. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. And if you're saying, yes, indeed, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I get this. Well, then the next step is to see if you can actually solve this equation. We have uh, 0.05x plus 0 .0, uh, 0 0.06 uh, times 10,000 minus x is equal to 575. All right, so again, uh, feel free to use your calculator. You should never do a problem like this without a calculator. Even if you know how to work with decimals by hand, that's fantastic. But, uh, you know, calculators are there to help you. 
Okay, so let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just like the way I kind of sneak this in? Now, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be sneaky, but I am, uh, you know, really trying to get you to focus here for a second on my uh, uh, invitation to subscribe to my channel. Now, the key word here is focus. And if you want to be successful in anything, you got to learn how to focus. This is like the number one skill. And if you're struggling in math, you really have to increase your focus. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I do focus, but I still get things wrong. Well, uh, that could very well be true. But what you want to do is focus on what you don't understand, right? So if you're like you're doing a prom, you're like, all right, I don't understand this. Focus in on what you don't get, okay? And then you need to get help, all right? But focus is critical. And the way to focus, uh, really, you know, it's a discipline, it's a habit, is to do math in a quiet place, you know, clear away any distractions. If you're trying to do math, watch TV at the same time, listen to the radio, have your cell phone next to you, you know, you're going to struggle, right? So you really have to get in a quiet place and focus. So uh, this is kind of the theme word for this video, focus. So I want you to focus in on that subscribe button, hit that because I need your support so I can help as many people as possible. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and focus on the rest of this problem. And let's solve this lovely equation here. So we have 0.05x plus 0.06 times 10,000 minus uh, x is equal to 575. All right, so first things first. First, we need to use the distributive property right here. So we're going to take this 0.06 times 10,000. That gives us 600. And then 0.06 times this uh, x is going to be 0.06x. All right, now if you're struggling with any of this stuff or if you don't get, you know, um, how I'm solving this equation, uh, basically the level of math that we're doing here would be like, say, uh, Algebra 1. So if you need additional help beyond this video, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to all those in the description of this video. Okay, so we have 0.05x plus 600 minus 0.06x. So the next thing we need to do is combine like terms. We have x here, x here. So we're going to add these coefficients. So 0 0.06, or sorry, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.06 gives us what? Well, let me go ahead and show you this. Obviously, I did the work. Okay, so again, we're going to combine like terms. Don't forget about this negative sign. You can kind of think of this as plus negative 0 0.06, but these two together is going to give us a negative 0 0.01. So we have 600 minus uh, 0 0.01x or 600 plus negative uh, 0 0.01x is equal to 575. All right, so we have all of our uh, variable terms on the left-hand side. we got to get this number over to the other side. So we're going to subtract 600 from both sides of the equation. And when we do that, we get uh, negative 0.01x on the left, and then 575 minus 600 gives us negative 25. All right, so to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 0.01. So we have a negative divided by negative, which of course is a positive. So negative 25 divided by negative 0 0.01. Again, use your calculator. Uh, we get 2,500. So x is equal to 2,500. And uh, some of you might be like, yes, we're done. Here it is. I'm going to turn in my paper. Wait, wait. We have not yet answered the question. So what was x? Well, we have to go back to the beginning of the problem. Remember, x, uh, we said we're going to let x equal the amount Lou invested at 5%. Okay, so Lou invested $2,500, or the value of X, what X was equal to, at 5%. And if he had $10,000, right, and he invested $2,500 at 5%, well, it's 10000 minus 2500 which is X, is how much he invested at uh, 6%, which, of course, again, is $7,500. All right, so hopefully this was pretty easy for those of you that have been practicing your algebra and word problems. Now, uh, if you want to get better in algebra, particularly word problems, uh, how do you do that? Well, uh, it's kind of a two-phase process. So, uh, well, two-step process. So step one is you got to get the skills, okay? You got to learn how to solve equations. You have to learn how to interpret or translate, 
a verbal phrase into an algebraic phrase. You gotta get these skills down. But once you have these skills down, if you master them really well, the second phase is to start practicing solving word problems, okay? In other words, how do you set up models? How do you set up equations? How do you interpret, you know, uh, you know particular models? And by the way, in algebra, there's a lot of different type of uh, similar problems, okay? Like rate, motion problems, uh, money problems, uh, uh, mixture problems. There's this kind of classic type of uh, problems. And if you master the master those, you're going to basically be able to handle 80 to 90 percent of the type of problems that you may see on tests and exams. But uh, you're not going to get better at this stuff unless you practice. So if you truly want to improve in math, you have to practice these skills. And how much practice? Well, as much <laughs> the more the better, let's just say. All right. So hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.